Small Group Leadership Training with Minister E. Walters. Hello, good evening again. Thank you for joining us in our leadership small group um, studies. We are very thankful again that we can meet together. I uh, hope you're keeping safe. Everyone is keeping safe and we are doing the best we can. So welcome again this evening. And um, we're going to be uh, speaking about a biblical view of the Christian community and its importance in the life of the believer. And um, I hope this evening will be a blessing to you as we study together. So let us breathe a word of prayer. Uh, thank you, Lord, again this evening for this privilege. We appreciate you so much. We give you thanks. Uh, we worship and praise your great name. How great is your name this evening, Lord. To you we lift up our hearts. And Lord, this evening as we are about to look into your word, we ask for your Holy Spirit leading. We pray for divine inspiration. Uh, fill the hearts of those who are joining us tonight and let your will be done in our lives as we serve and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I, I must say, uh, uh, shout a word out to my, my tech-savvy lady sister, Jules, that is helping us with this program this evening. And uh, we are very thankful, very grateful. All right, so um, a biblical view of the Christian community and its importance in the life of the believer. Uh, we will begin this lesson tonight uh, with the fact that God did not intend for his people to be scattered and fragmented or estranged from the body of Christ, the church. The scripture in many instances shows that uh, as individuals, we were created for community. God is a God of community and not just any community. Uh, but God has designed this community uh, for himself. Um, we, uh, the script, one of the scriptures tonight that I'll be using is Ephesians chapter one. And uh, this is the uh, beginning of our study tonight. Ephesians chapter one, verse 5 and 6, and I will read. Um, it says, Having predestinated uh, us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made, let me go on to verse 9, having made unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he pur pur purposed in himself. And um, uh, the scripture is saying to us that, uh, that God had predestinated us and, uh, and he has adopted us uh, by his son as, as his children. And he has chosen us uh, to be uh, um, his own people, his own people. Uh, body of people whereby and it was his good pleasure uh, to 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 take us into his uh, divine care and his uh, purpose for us is that we would be his people indeed so as we uh, 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 look in the book of Ephesians again we see the foundation of God calling his people, adopting them through Christ and uh, making us a, a family, the family of God. We study earlier on about the people of Israel. And indeed, 
It is a story of God's people as a community. Um, the story began in Genesis, uh, in the Garden of Eden. And we see the call of Abraham to the people of God, uh, Israel. And when we look at them being enslaved in Egypt, and um, God, by his mighty hand, took them out himself. Uh, and as earlier on we studied in Exodus uh, about the children of Israel and God leading them out of Egypt into the promised land. So we can see uh, that God had indeed um, taken that people, that nation, out of bondage, out of uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, situation that they were in, and he chose them to be his own people. Called them by name, and indeed uh, uh, allowed them to be his own people. In Exodus 33 and verse 15, we see uh, God uh, taking uh, Israel uh, in, in, the and in their journey, uh, in the wilderness and Moses um, spoke to the Lord concerning uh, his people. He told them in Exodus 33 verse 15 and 16 he said to the Lord that if God would not go with them uh, he would not go. He would not take them up and God uh, promised to be with them and to take them through that difficult journey and for sure he did. The Bible said he led them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So they would be a people who would live according to God's laws. He gave them the commands, the commandment uh, uh, and the, uh, at Mount Horeb. Uh, and so his laws and his commands uh, would, would be their guiding path. Uh, God said in, in Deuteronomy 6 and 1 that they should love the Lord uh, uh, with all their hearts and serve him. And not only that, uh, but um, God would be their only true God. Among the gods that were in the land, uh, God was to be their, their own uh, a God of, of, of uh, the nation. He would li love them. He would, he would teach them his ways. He would teach them their com his commands, and they were to follow. Not only that, but they were also um, to teach others how to love God and to serve God and love each other. So when God saw Israel, he did not see them as a, a, a people going their own way and doing what was right in their own eyes. God saw them as his children. He chose them. He took them out of uh, bondage. As we go back, we talk about God calling Abraham uh, out of Ur and send him to a land that he did not know. That was the beginning of God dealing uh, with, with mankind as he did in the uh, Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. So we see God um, dealing with humanity from the beginning of time. With Israel, when they were obedient to God and loving to each other, they were blessed by God. And when they went astray and rebelled uh, uh, and oppressed one another, they were, um, uh, uh, you know, God dealt with them and punished them in a way uh, that was uh, right so that he would bring them back to uh, the way that they are to be. Um, Again, when they uh, rebelled against God, uh, uh, after many times of forgiveness and restoration, uh, finally Israel was dispersed and defeated. But in Scripture, we see that God has always worked with his people. He would never forsake them uh, because God has a divine plan and a purpose for every one of his creation. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, God said uh, he knows the way, he knows the plans that he has for us, all of us, plans to do us good 
are not evil. So God has a divine plan for humanity. And um, when, we, when we look in the scripture, we, we see that God's people are never being fragmented or, or uh, going their own way, doing what they think is right. We, we have a father in heaven and he has, uh, he's a God of order. He knows the way uh, that we take. He understands uh, the importance of, of, of co community. He understands how we are to be as a body. And when we study um, uh, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12, we see how God, uh, the Apostle Paul relates to the body of Christ, how we are to be as a body and function as a body. And, and, and work together in unity as a body. So I want to talk to us tonight about this, uh, a new community. We talk about Israel as the children of God. But in the scripture, there is a, a, a community which is called the New Testament community. And so this new community, uh, Jesus came. And when he came, uh, he established his church and uh, the Bible said he ascended to heaven uh, in Acts chapter 1. Uh, and before he left, he said to the disciples that they should tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. He also promised that he would pour out of his spirit upon all flesh and the Holy Ghost would come upon them and they would be uh, in, in, infused with the power of the Holy Spirit. So after that was done, yes, indeed, God answered uh, their prayer. After the ascension of Christ, uh, uh, he sent the Holy Spirit and poured out upon them. And this new community that Jesus left on earth uh, functioned in the book of Acts. We see all that they the, the, the apostle did and, and the work that was performed. So in Acts 2 and verse 42, um, the Bible says, 41, uh, Therefore those who accepted and welcomed his message were ba baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. We're talking about a new community. And they steadfastly persevered, devoting themselves uh, constantly to the instruction and fellowship of the apostles, to the breaking of bread, including the Lord's Supper and prayers, and a sense of awe and reverential fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were performed through the apostles, God's special messengers. And all who believe, who adhered to and trusted and relied on Jesus Christ were united. And together they had everything in common. They sold their possession, both their land, property, and their movable goods and distributed the price among all according as they need. And we're going to uh, go on to verse 30, uh, 47. And day after day, they regularly assembled in the temple with united purpose. And in their homes, they broke bread, including the Lord's Supper. They partook of their food with gladness and simplicity and generosity constantly praising God and being in favor and goodwill with the people. And the Lord kept adding to the number daily uh, those who were being saved from spiritual death. Acts 2, verse uh, 41, 42 to 47. So, um, we read here that after Jesus was ascended back to heaven, uh, and uh, he promised them that he would send the Holy Spirit. And if you read from chapter 1, you will see how uh, the Holy Spirit came and was poured out upon this uh, uh, new um, congregation. And many, the Bible said, in one day, 3,000 were added uh, to the church. 
So um, the, 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 the scripture recorded that after the Holy Spirit was poured out, there were signs and wonders uh, were happening among them. And thousands, thousands were saved daily. So that's uh, uh, a community, a new community uh, that we see. The Bible said that they were, um, they listened to the apostles' doctrine. I, I was reading from the, um, the Amplified Version, but in the uh, other versions, the, whatever versions you, are, you might be reading from, and um, you can see the, the, the um, outcome of their, of their fellowship. In, in the uh, King James Version, uh, it talks about the church growing. Um, in chapter 2 and verse chapter um, 43, the Bible said that fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were do done through the apostles. And all that be who believed together, they had all things in common. There was such a camaraderie among these brethren. They continued daily in one accord, which is unity, in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart praising God and having favor with the people, with all the people. And the Lord added to the church, such as been saved. So there was an intimate, living, thriving community, according to the book of Acts, among the believers. There was um, singleness of heart. There was oh, unity. There was obedience. There was and, and God loves when we work together. When, when the Holy Spirit poured upon them, uh, they were a, a community who was, and, and most of them were from different areas. As you know, on the day of Pentecost, they came from all over, uh, um, uh, uh, everywhere among uh, the, 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 the new wor world that they were living in. Um, the New Testament church, uh, began with uh, people from different nationality, different uh, race, different um, class and culture of people. Uh, we saw them spending time. The Bible say they, they, they were spending time together. They were walking in faith, praying together, talking, growing, fellowshipping, eating, worshipping the one true God. And certainly that must have been uh, a great excitement uh, uh, with that uh, early church. And I really, truly love the book of Acts. When I read uh, the, the Acts of the Apostles, of the saints, the early church, and how they function as a body. There was a community that was um, next to none. No wonder when they were growing the Bible said they were, when they were going up to Antioch, uh, they were called Christians by those who noticed them because they, they, the oneness, the unity, the, the grace of God was upon uh, uh, the people of God. Now, um, when we talk about community, uh, what are we talking about? According to scripture, a community is a group of people living under God's rule learning how to love God and love one another. Now, uh, in last lesson, we taught about um, the church, uh, the Greek um, widows and, and the Jewish widows that were having, uh, uh, there was some problem among them uh, that the, the Greek um, widows were complaining that they were not having enough of the aid that was given. And um, the Apostle Paul, uh, the apostles went on to, to f fix that problem, knowing that uh, it was something that needed to be done. Um, let me say that no matter what church you, you go to, it doesn't matter where we worship. Um, there will always be problems. There's always going to be 
problems um, as we saw in that study. Once we are dealing with people, once we are dealing with individuals, uh, there are no perfect church. There is always going to be something that we have to deal with. It's human beings. And, but in spite of the differences, uh, we see how they sought to build a community of love, an interrelated community as they walked together, served together, ate together, prayed together, and, um, and encouraged each other in their faith in Christ. Um, so I believe it is God's plan in the New Testament church of today, uh, as it was then, so it is today. It is God's plan for us to, um, to live in community. Um, God has always uh, has a family. God always has a family. Uh, God's family is his people, the church. And all he expect of us, when we look at life in God's perspective, uh, it is the, the, the duty of man, the duty of every born again believer is to serve God and to love him as Lord and Savior. So in this new community that we're talking about, um, we see God's people uh, living out as they walk together. The Bible said that they, they, they were um, very keen on the apostles' doctrine. And they fellowship in the breaking of bread, in prayers, and fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. I wonder today if we would uh, follow the concept of the New Testament church and how God uh, uh, poured out upon them uh, his blessing. There were 3,000 souls added. Uh, um, daily God uh, added souls to the body of Christ for uh, his will and his purpose. Um, I do believe that God's intention is that we follow the biblical concept of being a member of the body of Christ in order that we might be built up in our faith. Uh, we all need a place to belong. Uh, you know, even today in these difficult times, um, as never before, people are so uh, depressed and cast down and um, there is a, a spirit of loneliness among people today. But in the body of Christ, we, have, we need one another. We need each other. We cannot function uh, as we are commanded in Scripture in so many places that we should pray one for the other. We should love one another. Uh, we should serve one another and care for one another and so on. So in this community, this is, this is very important. It is very important when we understand that we need a place to belong. Uh, in scripture, we saw God uh, in relationship with his, himself. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit uh, work together uh, with humanity. So God has designed a community where we can encourage one another, where we can help each other on this faith journey. Um, we look today and we see many have uh, been uh, having a very hard time because they're all alone by themselves. Uh, they received the Lord, but never connected to the body of Christ. And those of us who are truly connected to the body of Christ, we can say how much we have been, been uh, encouraged, even in this time of uh, uh, the, the, the problems all over the world that is happening now. We, we see uh, each one, even though we are not able to meet all the time in the, in the house of God, but we connect on media, we connect in different ways, we send texts, we, uh, we are not alone, we are here encouraging each other and building up each other. So if you're out there and you're walking alone, you are not in the right place. 
you're not in the right place. Peter warns us that um, we should uh, be careful that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is going about seeking, looking for loners, looking for people who are out there on their own. Yes, I know there are many that love the Lord and, and you know, gave your heart to the Lord. Uh, but let me remind you that the believer cannot grow up spiritually in Christ in isolation. We cannot. We need each other to thrive. Uh, like the early church, they continued uh, in the apostles' doctrine, in teaching. And I know today that some believers are not interested in teaching in the teachings of Christ or in the community uh, 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 where we learn uh, obedience to Christ. In this community, we learn to walk with the Lord. Yeah, even though sometimes we find ourselves, uh, you know, shaky on our feet, but here we are with one another. We can encourage one another, build up each other in the faith. I'm going to close this session, but I want to read a script, another scripture, which is Ephesians chapter um, 2, 16 to 19. And it reminds us that we are members of God's whole soul. And in him, we are built up together uh, to become a dwelling place in which God dwells by his Holy Spirit. So this is one of the other principles that the Christian community is a place designed by God where we are uh, built up, where we are encouraged, where we do life together. Uh, we are not a cult at all. We don't want to know your business. But in, in, from my perspective, I have seen how uh, being in a Christian community helps me uh, to function, to, to uh, a, a community where I'm accountable, accountable to those that are over me in the Lord. And so it is, it is very necessary, especially in the day we are living in, the last days, uh, we need that community. We need that camaraderie. We need to look in the, in the scripture and see that we are not supposed to be alone. We cannot thrive. We cannot uh, be built up without each other. We are members of God, all soul. And, you know, um, whether we uh, fail or succeed uh, in, 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 in the community where we are, it should be an atmosphere of encouragement. In the church, it should be a place of encouragement and fellowship and, and, and building up and growing and stability as we seek together to adhere to the commands of God. So um, each member, each member has its function, has its place as, uh, as we walk together in faith in the Lord Jesus. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, sometimes we have complaints. We say, well, I don't think they love, um, love people down there or, you know, we have our own <laughs> agenda. But um, let me say, the Bible tells us um, in 1 Corinthians 13, um, after the apostle telling us in Corinthians how we use the gifts of God and how we function, each of us function, he, he explained the importance of the gifts given to the church and um, the uses. And he command us in that chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, that we should, um, though we have the gifts of prophecy and, and all these great gifts uh, that are there, uh, the greatest of all gifts is love. And... Um, Nothing we do, if we do whatever we do and we do it out of love. In this community, the basic principle, one of the basic principles of this God's uh, community is that we learn to love each other, is that we learn to have a, a heart for each one. There is no big me and, and small you. Uh, the scripture commands us that we should love each other. Love is the greatest gift of all, of all the gifts that are given. Love is 
uh, the greatest one. And though we may be gifted in every area and have not loved, the Bible said we are nothing. Um, I also want to say one of the benefits of this community is to learn how to care for each other. Learn to how to be patient with one another. Learn to work together in diversity. Though we are diverse, we have different personalities and, and, and different um, culture and all of that. But as we look in the, in the New Testament church, we saw uh, the, the coming together of all nations. And yes, that's how it's going to be in the last days, beloved. Um, we, 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 we look at the, the story uh, of God from Genesis to, um, to Revelation. And we see that God is working uh, with all nations, working with humanity. And what's the purpose of it? What, what is the pur purpose of God working with us? Is that uh, when we look at it at God's perspective, we are going to be spending eternity together. We're going to be spending eternity together with God forever. And so it behoves us that whatever we do here on earth, it's going to reflect eternity. You, you can't walk alone and do your own thing and think that you will be able to, to learn the things of God, to be uh, um, you know, directed rightly. Uh, we are not a loner. We are not called to sit by the sideline and watch what God is doing. But we are a community of people that God has called to, to represent him on earth. And so I believe that this community is very important for every believer. We need to be accountable to one another. We need to be accountable to the Lordship of Christ. And we are all under that banner. So God bless you tonight. Um, we are going to continue with this um, study. Again, uh, tonight lesson reminds us that we are, we are a people in a community, a community designed by God. And we need to understand that this is very important for our stability and our growth. And it honors God when we work together, when we love as he loved, when we give as he gave. The Bible said he gave his only begotten son. Why does God have to do that? Because he loves us. And we learn to love because God loves us. So we will spend eternity with the Lord. And so whatever we do here, it is going to reflect eternity. God bless you. God bless you tonight. Thank you. I hope you have uh, gleaned something from this lesson tonight that we are in a community and that community is designed by God so that we when he comes we will be all together serving worshiping loving and doing the will of God from our hearts thank you ever so much we're going to close tonight in prayer father in heaven we give you honor we thank you for this time spent together Lord we ask that your Holy Spirit would take the word and establish it to our hearts Lord, we thank you that you are a God of community and you are a God of relationship. You know why you call us. And so because you love us, Lord, you gave your son, Jesus, to die for us. Help us to love as you love, uh, to be willing, Lord, to serve you in spirit and in truth, to surrender our lives, Lord, so that you can be glorified. We thank you tonight and we praise you for this time as we worship your holy name, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, beloved ones. Thank you. Hope you are having a safe uh, time. Have a great weekend, and may God bless you. See you in church on Sunday. God bless you. We love you. Thank you.